Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. This is Tarot by Melissa. And in today's reading, we're going to be answering the question, or rather learning about your next romantic relationship. So we will be looking into the next romantic connection that is being presented to you or potentially heading your way. We're going to get some insight into the connection, what you need to know about the connection, lessons being learned in this connection, potentially, if you want. Uh, and then we're also going to be looking into your person and getting some clues about who this person is, why they're coming into your life, and even maybe get some insight into what they look like or where you might meet them. So super fun, entertaining reading. I would definitely say as a disclaimer, uh, this is general always. Keep in mind they're general readings, so not everything I'm saying may be your situation and that's totally fine. Um, also keep in mind you guys that, you know, this should really be taken as a fun kind of just entertaining reading. Uh, if you see something that's predicted out for you in terms of a connection or a person that's heading your way and you don't feel like you want to welcome that energy into your life, just know that you have free will to make a different choice, right? This reading is just kind of tapping into the energy of what's potentially headed next. And you can always say no thank you if you want, <laughs> okay? If you guys did want to book a personal reading, all the details on how you could book one with me will be linked in the description box down below. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get into our pile selection. So we're doing three piles today. For pile number one, we have some black moonstone. Pile two is citrine. And pile three will be pink tourmaline. So I want you guys to take a deep breath and really think about your next romantic connection headed your way. What do you need to know about the person? What do you need to know about the connection? Go ahead and select the crystal or the card that you feel the most intuitively connected to. And once you've made your choice, you can scroll down to the description box to locate the timestamp that will take you to your selected pile. See you there. Hey, pile one. If you guys picked out this black moonstone, this will be your reading. We're going to be looking into your next romantic relationship. Keeping in mind, guys, this is for fun. And if you ever see something predicted out for you in a reading like this, you do not have to receive this energy if you do encounter it, unless you want to, right? So, Let's jump in. We're going to get started with our overall energy. We're going to be getting into the connection itself first, and then we're going to transition into some um, some information about your person. So we're going to use this deck here. Let me show you guys to find out what they look like, which will be really fun, and just we'll learn some qualities and characteristics about them. So let's jump in. So starting us off with pile one, we have pay attention to the red flags. We have the frog spirit. Clear out the clutter. Okay, let's do the tarot. And then we'll, we'll get into this and build on with some more oracle cards. So let's take a look at the joining energy of the connection between you and this person. Or you and this potential person, we'll say, should you choose to connect with them. Joining energy, please, between pile one and their potential next partner. We have a ten of cups. Let's get my pile one viewers and their energy on the left. We have a six of cups. And we have their person's energy on the right hand side in this connection. Page of Swords. I do feel that there is like some inner child stuff coming up, especially for you, my viewer, with this person, because we have a Six of Cups here on your end. We also have the Sun card at the bottom of the deck, which is showing this little cute little kid here. So I do feel that this is a connection that's going to be like shining a light onto maybe some stuff from your childhood potentially, or maybe just like be bringing up some stuff for you from the past in general. Um, so 
Yeah, I definitely, with the Ten of Cups joining the two of you, there's definitely something about family here. For some of you guys, this could be an LGBTQ relationship as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be that for everybody, but I am seeing that here um, with rainbows in these cards. If that doesn't resonate with you, just discard. But I do feel that there is like a really beautiful joining energy between the both of you with this Ten of Cups. And I do feel that for this group, this is like a soulmate type of connection, maybe a past life type of connection with the Six of Cups. If that is not something you believe in or if that doesn't resonate with you, I do feel that this next person, this next connection that's coming in for you, it is something that or someone that might feel a little bit familiar, right? An energy that feels familiar um, with the Six of Cups here. So overall energy of this connection, we've got pay attention to the red flags. We have the frog spirit clearing up the clutter. I do feel that there might be something about this connection that feels a little bit messy for some of you or that feels a little bit, um, like I'm getting that this is a connection that's going to just be bringing, I just keep getting that it's bringing stuff up from the past for you, right? So I, I kind of feel with clear out the clutter here, there's like something with this person that I think might be like maybe triggering some anxiety for you guys, my viewer, because, or maybe for them too, because they have some skepticism energy here with the Page of Swords. But when I think of like clutter, I think of like mess or I think of like holding on to stuff, right? And not wanting to like get rid of it necessarily or like letting things kind of pile up and not kind of like taking care of it in the moment so that it doesn't become a mess to begin with. So there's like something about this energy of this connection where like I think that if you guys don't address things like in the moment as they arise, as they bother you or whatever it is, like I think it's going to, it may cause this energy of building up to the point where like now we're in a mess and we have to figure out how we're going to clean it up, right? It's like And I, I think for some of you with the red flag energy being here, there just could be something about this person that makes you feel a little bit anxious. Something about their energy might just make you feel a little bit anxious or pull at like past stories that you've told yourself about connections or relationships past. But that being said, I do see just this beautiful energy between the both of you with the Ten of Cups, right? I see love. I see this could be even a person that some of you end up in like a long-term commitment with. At the very least, I see that this is someone, you and this person are on the same page in terms of wanting that long-term commitment. I do see celebration and the ability to be your authentic self with this person. I also see a lot of dreamy energy with this person as well with the Ten of Cups, this Id idyllic sort of energy between the both of you. Um, I feel like your person with the Page of Swords also has big goals and big dreams for themselves. You guys may meet this person at school or this person could be somebody who's really creative in nature. Um, they are someone who's curious. They are somebody who is showing up as being curious and inquisitive. They have a lot of dreams, a lot of things that they think about. There's there's like a cloudy, like there's kind of like a Neptunian, like Piscean energy that I'm getting from this a little bit. And this could be where some of this like clutter energy is coming from, where like sometimes in these types of connections where we're so like caught up in the, like the, the idealism of it, we don't always see clearly what it is that's making us feel like something is off, right? Um, I think that this person is somebody who might be, they're, they're more like, they have air energy on their side of things. So it's like, they seem a little bit more, um, 
inquisitive. They seem a little bit more like on the logical side of things. This could be a person, like I was saying earlier, who has like a little bit of skepticism about love and romance. Um, they may also be feeling like they need to pay attention to the red flags, right? I think that that energy is there for both of you. It's the overall energy of the connection of just being a little bit cautious before we dive into things fully. But there is that energy there of wanting to dive into things fully and potentially getting there. But yeah, for you guys, I definitely can see that this is like a very comfortable, like familiar energy that you're dealing with here. Um, and I definitely see inner child stuff coming up with this person, especially for you, my viewer. So let's continue here. Let's pull a few more cards. What else should Pile 1 know about the this connection that's coming towards them? We have intuition. You already know the answer. You seek. OK. We have mastery. You've learned the spiritual lesson. We also have fate. This is a destined partnership. So this is this is an energy. Whether or not you guys end up connecting with this person or not, um, that's ultimately up to you. But this energy is being presented to you for a reason. It's like destined that you connect with this type of energy. Okay. And I do think that it has to do with learning to trust your intuition and trust your instincts here. When something feels off, you're learning through this next connection that like when something feels off, you've got to honor your intuition. Okay. Um, you guys may also, I'm getting meet this person online with that page of swords coming up here. And the thing about it is you guys, like six of cups, a lot of times for me talks of like past life connections. It talks about either somebody we've known in a previous lifetime, you're coming together in this lifetime to teach each other a lesson on your soul's journey and evolution, right? But it can also just simply, if you don't really resonate with that, it can also just simply talk about familiar energies, right? Like you've encountered this type of energy before. And this time, when you guys do encounter it, you've mastered this lesson, right? Let's get, I, I want to get a few more of these. Let's see what else we need to know for pile one about this connection that's coming their way. We have lightning. We have kisses. We have wedding rings. I feel for a lot of you guys, there are indications here that like you could end up with this person for long term if you wanted to. There is energy of marriage joining the two of you together. And even if you don't end up marrying this person or being with this person for a long term, there is this opportunity because both of you guys seem to want that for yourselves, right? So you are sharing that in common with the joining energy of this connection. This does also talk about like soul connections though, right? Again, this is a soulmate connection that's coming through for you. For you. This connection is helping you guys, I think, to really trust yourselves a little bit better. I feel like you and this person will be able to connect on this more playful level, almost like childlike level in a way. Like you're going to feel, I think, that you could really be yourself with this person. And there's something about this connection, like a shocking realization or a way that you're looking at things that is drastically shifting through connecting with them. I feel it's really interesting, right, that we have this energy of paying attention to red flags here because what I'm getting is like I, I don't feel 
like there are a lot of negative intentions that this person has for you. I'm not seeing any red flags myself in these cards other than what's coming up here at the on the overall energy. This person may have some skepticism to them, but I see here that they are showing up as being very loving and caring and this talks about giving and receiving affection. So physical touch could be this person's love language as well. I feel for you guys, like maybe what you're realizing through this relationship is the stuff within you is what's causing the anxiety. I feel like this is old stuff, old patterns that you're healing, old patterns that you're releasing through connecting with this person. It's almost like you're bringing in, with this pay attention to the red flags, I feel that there's like this potential to almost be like hyper vigilant because of stuff that you've encountered in the past. And maybe this person has some familiar tendencies or similar tendencies to people you've connected with in the past, which trigger you. But just because they're, they have those similar tendencies, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're the same as that person who may have wronged you before. So... This is definitely really interesting. Let's continue to get a little bit more insight here about this person, because I think this will help us to understand what's going on here a little bit better. So let's take a look and see who this person is. So we're going to start with these who cards. So tell us, who is this person that's coming towards pile one in their next romantic connection, please? We have the year of the dog. So this is a very loyal person. Somebody who likes to be sociable, perhaps. I can kind of see that with the Page of Swords. Like they like to talk, you know, they like to talk and they're curious. They have a curious, logical mind. Like this could be a person that really just enjoys getting to the bottom of things, getting to the root of things. This person is nearby kind of interesting with the six of cups like you guys could meet this person in the area that you grew up or in the area that you've lived for a long time or just I mean, maybe they're in like your neighborhood or just like in some of the places that you frequent we have coming in to offer resources and stability yeah so see this person seems to have positive intentions i'm also wondering for you guys if this energy of clearing out the clutter could even be something more like mundane in the sense that it's about like somebody's home or somebody's like stuff um being a red flag or like maybe if this person is nearby you, there could be this energy of being a little bit like worried about how that might impact your day to day if you started to get romantically involved with them. Something like that with the clearing out of the clutter and the red flags is coming up. Like maybe it's more about the environment in which you're connecting and meeting this person. Tell us about the characteristics of Pile One's person that's coming their way, please. Tell us about their personality, their characteristics, their archetype, please. We have an Avenger. Desire to balance the scales of justice, righteousness on behalf of society or oneself. You see, they have this like Libra energy, like air energy, really strong. This person could be very well traveled also. Like they could be, maybe for some of you, they could be, um, from another country than where you live, but maybe they live where you live now as you're meeting them somewhere nearby. We also have the exorcist, freeing yourself and others of destructive impulses. Fear of facing your own demons, yeah. I, d I definitely kind of feel like this person could be different from you guys in some way like maybe where they grew up or I don't know why I'm getting this but 
I feel it for some of you guys out there. But yeah, this is a person who is, um, I think, quite spiritual also. Again, they're coming in with stability and resources. They're coming in showing up as somebody who wants to help you and support you. So let's take a look and see what they may possibly look like for fun, okay? We have a couple of these decks we're gonna work with. So tell us about this person for pile one. What are some physical characteristics that they may have? We have brown eyes. We have muscular, so someone that likes to work out probably. Okay. We have black hair, so darker features for sure are coming through with this person. We also do have bald at the bottom of the deck, so that could be for some of you guys. Let's pull from this deck as well. So tell us about the physical, or just tell us more about this person that Pile 1 may be connecting with next. Has a severe allergy. Well, isn't that oddly specific? Okay. <laughs> Let's see what else. Your first kiss will be within one year from now. So this person is really close. You guys are very close to meeting this person, okay? Um, definitely seems like they are within your, your energetic field for sure. We have can speak more than one language fluently. Yeah, so remember I was getting they could be from another country. Make something valuable with their own hands. This is a very resourceful person. Maybe they're coming in to help you with something cluttered in your home or something like, I don't know. Like it just, it feels like there's something about like cleansing with this person. Um, they're here to help you in some way, like physically support you. Has a triple syllable first name. So that's interesting. Okay. We have has been in your proximity at least once in the last six months. So yeah, you guys, this person, you're a lot closer to meeting this person than you probably even realize. Um, this looks very interesting and very positive. Pile number one, I really would love to hear from you in the comments. Let me know if you think you know who this person is because it really feels like they are close to you. And definitely I would love to hear your insights on what you feel the red flags and the clutter energy means for you. Because when I'm tapping into this energy, it doesn't feel like there's really anything negative about this person, right? There, but there's something coming up for you, for both of you maybe, when you guys initially meet that's causing you each to kind of question like, or maybe we should proceed with caution is sort of the vibe here. But it looks really promising, pile number, uh, oh, excuse me, pile number one. So comment below. Let me know your thoughts. Um, if you guys are not already, please do subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell so you'll be updated when I'm posting the next reading, and I'll see you there. Bye. Hi, Pile 2, and welcome to your reading. We are going to be looking into your next romantic relationship, so we'll be getting some insight into the connection itself, as well as some insight into the person, who they are. We're going to use this really cool deck to try to see what it is that they may look like, where you guys might meet them. So this will just be really fun, and just always keep in mind, guys, with these, these are general readings. If you see something predicted out for you that's coming your way, you have the free will to say no thank you if you don't want, to, if you don't want that connection. Okay, <laughs> so let's just have fun with this and let's jump right in. Okay, so pile one, overall energy of this connection. We have the energy of unrequited love. Do not click off the video yet, pile two. Okay, let's just, let's see where this goes. We have the cow spirit. The miracles are endless. Okay, let's pull some more cards. We're going to pull from the tarot. First, let's take a look at the joining energy of this connection between you and this person. Joining connection between pile two and this person. This next romantic connection coming their way. We have an ace of wands. 
Let's get my pile two viewers and their energy with regard to this connection. We have a king of cups. And let's get the energy of their person. Oh, okay, this flew out. And it flew out reverse, so we're gonna take it that way. So it's a five of wands in reverse. Okay. Let's get these cards next, and then we'll get into this interpretation. This connection, I think, hold on. Let me not speak too soon. We have strictly sexual. I know what's going on here. Okay, interesting, okay. This is so interesting that the self-care card is coming up at the bottom of the deck here because what I'm very, very strongly getting from the energy of this connection for you, Pile 2, is there is an emphasis. When this, when this person is coming into your life, first of all, I think it's somebody that you guys have already dealt with because we have the second chance card coming up here, okay? This is somebody from the past. This is somebody that you guys have already connected with before. And this connection was likely an imbalanced connection in the past. I see here with the Ace of Wands, the joining energy of this connection is very physical in nature. And we're seeing that echoed here with Strictly Sexual. This could have been how it was in the past. And this is also how I'm seeing, seeing it come together in the future. I think that you and this person actually have a ton of chemistry, tons of physical chemistry and passion between each other. There's definitely an element of excitement and, and spark <laughs> between you both, okay? However, going back to this energy of the self-care, this is what the cow spirit is also talking about. The cow spirit is talking about ensuring that your own needs are being cared for. And that if you are in situations where you find yourself giving too much to a connection or you find yourself overextending yourself, foregoing having your own needs met, that it's going to be time to kind of dial it back a little bit and check in with you, right? It's about taking care of your own needs and understanding that the miracles are endless, meaning that the universe, spirit, source wants to give you exactly what you want. But in order to get that, you have to believe that you deserve it, right? So there's an element of self-love energy coming up here for you guys with this reading. Now, when we have unrequited love, sometimes really what this means is that we've got two people that just aren't really on the same page in terms of what it is that they want, okay? I see, yes, not on the same page. It doesn't mean that there's not chemistry. It doesn't mean that someone's not as into us as we are into them. Sometimes that can be the case. Sometimes unrequited love is when we're not as into them as they're into us. But what I'm feeling is more so an imbalance in what you guys are both wanting here. This is a very passionate connection. There's a lot of chemistry. And what I'm seeing here when I look at this card is we've got this masculine energy really trying to like woo and romance the feminine. But the feminine looks very stable and secure and she almost looks a bit disinterested. Like she's letting him kiss her hands, but she's kind of just like, what is going on? Like, what do you want? Why are you here? <laughs> like, you know, she doesn't look that into it. And with you guys, my viewer, coming up here with the King of Cups, I see you very much in control of your emotions. I see you guys emotionally mature, handling this situation with a high level of emotional intelligence because this is not the first time that you've dealt with this person. I think the difference here is that before, maybe this was a person who could really get you feeling like riled up or they could really get you feeling down about yourself. And you've learned how to master your emotions and to handle this a little bit differently so that you are taking care of you and that you are emotionally protected regardless. Because I do see that, I think for this group, one thing I am seeing for this group that I think will be very important for you is boundaries. And I'm afraid with that King of Cups, with this, this watery energy here, you may sometimes struggle with boundaries with this person. Um... Are some of you guys artists also? This is Bas Basquiat, I think is how you pronounce his last name, but 
I feel that you guys are very creative. You're very, you're more emotional to this connection where your person is more physical is what I'm getting. And so I think the lesson here for you is about making sure that you are taking care of your emotions, setting the right boundaries so that you're not getting out of sorts because of this person and what they're doing or not doing. Um, lots of fire energy here. Your person's energy with the five of wands in reverse what I kind of feel with their energy this time around is that they don't want to fight. They don't want to compete. They don't want to argue. Um, they don't want to stir the pot. Let's get a few more cards. I, I don't know if they, I, I'd really be curious to know what happened in the past with this person and why they're coming through. So like, uh, like less chaotic as before. I mean, this could be a good thing, but um, you guys may also have to travel to see each other. I'm getting with this Metro card being here, maybe by a train or something. So we've got the runner. We have the sunglasses. Ooh. Okay, and then we have the sword and rose coming up. Yeah, okay. I feel like for you guys, because of this energy of the strictly sexual, it's it puts you sort of in this fear of fully letting your guard down with this person. Because with the Queen of, I'm sorry, with the King of Cups, I do feel like for this group, you guys have a lot of love to give. I think you have a lot of love for this person, right? But it's matured. And maybe part of this runner energy is part of protecting yourself, right? Because this person, though they're showing up as the next person that you will be potentially romantically connecting to, I see them not totally focused on this in a way that they were in the past, maybe, with the sunglasses. It's like they're trying to kind of, like they're focusing out. With the five of wands reverse and the sunglasses energy, it's like they're focusing out. Instead of stirring things up and trying to get things going, it's like they're dialing back and taking a much softer maybe more passive approach than they have in the past. But they're still watching you. They're still keeping an eye on you. And I, I have to tell you, I noticed the word gaslighting here. And so that's kind of interesting that maybe there's there's something about this person where they're not fully taking accountability for whatever happened in the past. But what I see with the sword and rose here is that clarity and truth are coming for this connection. Okay, And that is going to be what protects you and sets you free ultimately. But I think it's hard because it, it definitely seems like you and this person have a lot of chemistry and passion. And I also can see that there's like a sense of humor and there's like a sense of fun between the both of you. All right. So let's take a look, pile two, and let's see what other traits we can learn about this person. What other traits can we learn about pile two's person, please? We have Messiah, serving humility, I'm sorry, serving humanity with humility, exaggerated belief that you are the only means through which a cause can succeed. This person may be quite spiritual as well. They may support some sort of humanitarian cause. Let's see what else. We have slave. Surrendering your power of choice to the divine with complete trust. Giving your willpower to an external authority out of fear of making your own choices. So this person is taking a more passive stance on this connection this time around, you guys. Um, and I'm wondering if because of this passive stance, this is like why we're seeing... Um, 
I'm wondering if this is what's causing you to feel this unrequited love energy, like maybe questioning whether or not this person's really that into it anymore because they're not showing up in a very like offensive stance in a way. Um, The other scenario that I am getting for some of you guys out there that I just want to put out there, this may only be for a select few of you, but this person might be showing up more passively and sort of allowing you to be the one to steer or lead in this connection because you are in a leadership energy here with the King of Cups. They may be doing this because of your runner tendencies as well. And this doesn't mean like you're running away out of like – doing something wrong to this person, but I just think that this person triggers you. And so maybe in the past there's been this sort of push and pull where you guys have like kind of distanced yourselves when you felt like things were um, going in a particular direction that you weren't comfortable with. And so this person, even though it's like they're showing up here as a second chance, I feel like maybe because you've pulled away in the past – they're letting you sort of dictate the terms here. Okay. So tell us more about Pile 2's person. What should Pile 2 know about this person in this romantic relationship? So we have Virgo energy coming up. Okay. Tell us more. We have admirer. Coming in with advice and guidance. We also do have the year of the rat at the bottom of the deck. We have artsy energy here. Interesting. It's like weird, you guys, because it's like they're very, um, this person could be like an overthinker. They could be a perfectionist. They seem like someone who's actually quite hardworking or they support some sort of cause that's very important to them. But I feel like they're keeping a safe distance. They're admiring you. It does seem like they're coming in with positive intent. But it feels very much like they're just letting you take the lead here. And what I'm guided to say, even if this is not a person for some of you guys that you've ever connected with before, I feel like for most of you it is because we have the second chance card coming up. But if this is like a new person, then this could be a familiar energy that you guys have dealt with in the past, which is like a more passive type of person who doesn't really have a lot of direction in relationships or like to lead in relationships. And then you're finding yourselves having to be the leader in the relationship, which turns you off. And then you bolt because you're like, I'm over this. This is not what I want. Um, let's see. So for pile two, let's get some physical traits of this person. So we have the beard coming up, so facial hair. We have short, so this person may be a little bit shorter in stature. And we have curly hair, so hair and facial hair are being highlighted and this person has a shorter height. We also have freckles here at the bottom of the deck. Let's get a couple of these cards too, let's see what else we get. What else should Pile 2 know about this person? Has an unusual hair feature. Likes to use their middle name.
Your paths will cross during the next air sign season. So probably Libra season, depending on when you view this, the next air sign season will be Libra season. But this is a timeless reading, so it could be Aquarius season, Gemini season, just depends when you're watching. There is a three to five year age difference between you. And look at this, has a noticeable facial feature, maybe the beard. <laughs> so this looks very interesting, pile two. I would really like to hear from you, especially if you feel like this is a past person. Let me know in the comments if you guys think that you know who this is or how you feel like this might resonate with you. Um, as always, thank you guys so much for taking the time to view the reading. If you're not already, please just subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell so you'll be updated when I post the next reading. And I do look forward to seeing you then. Bye. Hey, pile three. If you guys chose the pink tourmaline palm stone, this is going to be your reading. We're looking into your next romantic relationship. So we're going to begin by taking a look at the connection itself and what you need to know about the connection. Then we're going to take a look at the person of significance that you'll be connecting with potentially. We're going to look at this deck to look at their physical descriptions, try to understand who they are, their traits. So hopefully you guys will find this to be a fun, entertaining reading. And as I've said, with all of the piles, remember that just because this is the energy that's potentially heading your way next, it doesn't mean that you have to accept it, right? You have the free will to say, no, thank you. <laughs> okay, so let's jump right in. So overall energy of the connection for pile three, we have the energy of chemistry. We also have the porcupine spirit. So... Right off the bat, this is definitely going to be a connection where the chemistry is strong, a strong magnetic attraction. So definitely physical chemistry, um, physical attraction. Let's pull some tarot cards and then we'll kind of um, keep going here. Joining energy of this connection, please, for pile three and this person. have Hierophant, the energy of my viewers for pile three in this connection. We have a 10 of wands and let's get the energy of this person. Three of cups. <sighs> okay. So with the porcupine spirit coming up here, there is, so yes, there's a lot of chemistry between the both of you. You definitely have a strong pull to each other. The porcupine spirit is talking about starting fresh, starting from curious, really going into the connection with inqu inquisitiveness and curiosity and seeking to understand the other party. The porcupine spirit, though, can also talk about having like a potentially like defensive stance about things. So if you guys think of a porcupine, when it feels like it's being attacked, its little quills come up and it can, um, you know, sting its enemy, right? Or whatever it perceives as attacking it. So I think that probably the issue here that I'm seeing is that this person seems like somebody who has a very lighthearted energy with regard to this connection, there's someone that has a lot of fun. I think they have a lot of friends in their lives. And I see you guys as being much more serious with the Ten of Wands. I also feel like this person could be potentially just spread very thin because I see them as being very social or just having a lot of important connections in their life. Right? There is, There are three people here. So there could be, for some of you, like a third party-ish type of energy. It doesn't necessarily have to mean that they have someone else, right? Because we're talking about you being in a relationship with them. But the point I'm trying to make is that they have other connections in their life that are important to them. And I think that it leaves you potentially feeling like you're having to do all this serious work or that you're 
taking care of things on your own, okay? And going back to the porcupine spirit, we have to allow the connection to play out and give it some time before we just assume that somebody is not showing up correctly. Um, because I do see between the both of you with this Hierophant card here, there's the potential that you might actually marry this person or end up being in a long-term committed relationship with this person. And there is love here with this beautiful red rose. There's love. There's passion between the both of you. But I see a little bit of some thorns between the both of you as well. So let's see. And that's kind of how it is, right? Like no relationship is going to be all like hearts and flowers all day, every day, right? There's going to be disagreements. Um, there are going to be things that we don't always see eye to eye on with our partner. That's totally normal. But what I feel a little bit with this is um, the energy of like resentment if it's not kept in check. Because it seems like you, my viewer, with this 10 of wands are sort of like in this work work energy or putting in a lot of effort, supporting the burdens of the other person and taking things on your own. But then I see this person in a really fun sort of energy. So let's see. What else should Pile 3 know about this connection? Play hard. Find time to laugh, goof off, and enjoy each other. Let's see. Children are important to this partnership. So there could be children involved here. You guys may end up having children with this person. This person may have children already coming into this connection, which could make you feel like, you know, again, it's like an energy of them having their energy a little bit scattered between parties because they have other people in their life that are important. I also see this Ten of Wands in a positive way for you, my viewer, as being willing to take on those children or that person, this person's life that they've already built. Um, being willing to work and take on the burdens and responsibilities that come along with that. And I also see that you guys will, you guys may actually meet this person in a, in a friend group or through a friend. Um, I see that you guys will have a ton of fun together with this play hard energy coming up. I see a lot of quality time here as well. I'm seeing like tattoos and stuff like that in this card here. I'm wondering if that's significant to some of you. We have wedding rings. So here's another indication that you and this person could be in a, end up in a long-term committed connection or getting married. We also have self-indulgence. Focus on self, self-worth, time to heal, shadow work, and self-appreciation. Yeah. Um, we also have girl with a snake here at the bottom of the deck, which is interesting. Let's see if it comes back through. What else does pile three need to know about this connection? Which that card, it's very interesting because it talks about like one person sort of like needing to have better boundaries and making sure they're not taking on too much of the other person's stuff, which I see coming through for you, my viewer, pile three. So with the boat coming up here, I definitely can see that there is a lot of indication that though there may be challenges or struggles at times, there's an energy of ultimately receiving what you need, making progress, moving forward, right? Smooth sailing in the connection overall. Travel could be important to you and this person. You could meet them overseas or meet them through travel, on the water specifically. And I do see like very serious commitment energy here between the both of you and especially, especially on your side of things, pile number, um, number three. I feel like you guys definitely take this connection very seriously. And it doesn't mean that your person doesn't take it seriously. I just think that they have a more lighthearted sort of approach to things. Um, they are self-focused in certain ways. With self-indulgence being here, 
this is talking about self-worth and healing and self-appreciation. So this person may be going through a time in their life when you meet them where they're needing to pour more into them, right? And this could be why initially it may feel as though um, you're the one taking up all the burdens or doing all the work. This person is going through a time when you meet them, I feel like, when they have to focus on themselves for a bit for healing purposes. So let's take a look, pile three. I want to find out more about this person for you. So tell us more about who this person is for my pile threes. We have mirror. You guys are mirroring each other. <laughs> they are a mirror for you. Okay, so this is really interesting. Let's see what else. We have the energy of Capricorn. This person is responsible, right? But they're also independent. They have other things they're passionate about outside of this connection, maybe work. We have the year of the ox. Loyal, reliable, thorough, determined, strong, reasonable, steady, and determined. Um, interesting energy. We also have fleeting here at the bottom. Now, for some of you, this could be the type of person that's not here for a long term, even though we have a lot of this long term energy here. It could end up that you and this person just have kind of a fleeting connection. We also have twin flame here, which is interesting with the mirror coming up. But the other message I'm getting with this is that this energy, this kind of tough energy could just be a fleeting energy, right? Like, I think that you and this person show here that there's a lot of potential to move into something more long term if you're able to work through any issues effectively. Because I do feel like there is mirroring energy here that you guys may trigger each other with the porcupine coming up. There's going to be a need to start from curious, right? So if something that this person does feels like it's triggering you, it's going to be really important for you to look within and say, why is this upsetting me? Or to communicate with your partner and say, hey, like I'm curious about da 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 da. And really look at this through a beginner's eyes. Instead of projecting stuff from the past onto it, it's about kind of looking at it through a new and fresh perspective and not projecting old stories onto new things or new people. And that's for both sides, for both you and this person. I also think that whatever it is, with the mirror card coming up here, whatever it is about this person that you like are also qualities that you have. And whatever you don't like are qualities that you have, right? Like, so you guys are very much, you're reflecting back important inner energies to each other. All right, let's see. Let's take a look at their characteristics here. What's their what are their archetypes for pile 3? We have trickster. Transcending convention, stuffiness and predictable behavior, manipulating others through duplicity. So they may have a little duplicitous energy about them. But this can also just talk about being a person that's a little bit outside the box, a little bit unconventional. They may actually practice magic in some way or be very creative. We have the gambler. Willingness to follow intuition even when others doubt you. Um... This person is definitely somebody who's willing to take risks. This definitely feels like someone who trusts themselves 
Like, even if they can't see it really clearly, they still sort of trust their intuition and their instincts as they move forward. I do think this person's very hardworking. I do think you and this person will have a lot of fun together. I do feel like you and this person have the potential to move to like a very long-term stable connection. But I do think that there will be thorns that you will have to, that you will experience together. And it's all about the way that you choose to communicate about them and how you choose to work through them. Okay. So let's take a look and see. We're going to see their um, potential physical characteristics. So what does this person potentially look like for pile three? So we have average height coming up. We have freckles. We have man bun, okay. Um, we also have long hair at the bottom of the deck, curly hair. So hair seems to be a thing that's significant about this person that's gonna stand out. Let's get a few of these. What else should pile three know about their person? Wants to send you a message. This person is already wanting to communicate with you. Has more vowels than consonants in their last name. Already knows who you are. So this person, if you guys have not met them yet, they know who you are. They have their eye on you, I think. There's a three to five year age difference between you. At the bottom of the deck, music will be playing when they ask you out. Very interesting. Okay, so pile three. This is a very interesting reading. I would love to hear from you in the comments. Do you feel like you might know who this is? What do you think about the energies that are being presented here? Drop me a comment below and let me know. If you're not already, please do subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell so you'll be updated when I post the next video. And I do look forward to seeing you then. Bye.